Hey friends, Monoducks here. I thought I'd do a little nerdy um, studio tour video while I've got everything cleaned up here and uh, just walk you through the stuff that I use in making music. Um, hopefully it's helpful if you're planning to build a modular or if you're just curious about uh, what I'm doing here. Um, anyway, with no further ado, we'll go ahead and start. So the, the main piece is the uh, System 55, which uh, is essentially the same as it comes uh, with a couple of minor tweaks. So when you buy a System 55 from Behringer, you get sort of the top three rows are filled in with the synth and then the bottom row is empty. Um, so I went ahead and bought some 2500 modules, put them in the top row, and I have it set up like that. Uh, because I didn't buy the envelopes or anything like that for the uh, 2500 so I wanted everything to be easy access so up top I've got uh, two oscillators uh, from the 2500 system uh, I have the multi-mode filter resonator the mod amp uh, I'm using the uh, the noise generator from the Behringer system 55 there uh, I love the dual sample and hold random. I use that to drive um, sequencer clocks all the time. That's amazing. And then we got the mix sequencer and the the sequential control 1027 module. And that's it for the 2500 modules proper that are in the case. And then from there on, it's essentially a Behringer System 55 as is. Um, I've added back in the filter bank fixed filter bank. I'm going to try to make friends with that. Um, and then I move some things around so I've got a mixer up here to use with the 2500 stuff and also to get some molts on the top row. And then I've rearranged the way that the VCAs and the envelope generators are placed so that I can have an envelope and a VCA in pairs. And it'll be a little bit easier I think at a glance to see exactly what's controlling what. So moving down, all of this um, is the same as it comes. Um, got six oscillators and two oscillator controllers with a seventh oscillator that's really used for modulation, but um, it's got all the waveforms. And uh, actually, yeah, I don't think I ever really use it for audio. I always use it for modulation. And then of course the 960 sequencer, which I loved a bit, wonderful sequencer. Um, just a note about combining these two systems. There is a noticeable difference in power output from the 2500 and the uh, System 55 modules. So even the oscillators are louder. Um, the voltage output is much higher. Um, so it's a little bit of a mismatch in some ways, but I'm still glad I've, I'm able to kind of use them in the same system. Uh, and then on the Behringer system, there's a MIDI input there uh, as well at the end of that row. And then the bottom row has got controllers and mixers, oscillator controllers. I've sacrificed one of the oscillator controllers so that I can put in this uh, Bode frequency shifter. And uh, everything else is pretty much as it comes. I've moved down the dual trigger delay because of all the trigger stuff is happening here at the bottom right. I'm getting MIDI in from the uh, Archuria key step. And then from that MIDI, I'm converting it into CVs and trigs for the rest of the system. And a quick tip for anybody that's looking for uh, cable storage, jewel, jewelry racks are awesome and they're dirt cheap on Amazon. This is like for necklaces and bracelets and stuff. Works great. Uh, so moving on over to the left, I've moved uh, my third 2500 oscillator to the 2600 rack. It's a good match. It all works really well together. And then my other... Uh, 960 sequencer and sequential switch is, is in this rack as well. And uh, the thing that started it all, started this channel really, uh, at least in earnest, is the Behringer 2600. 
Now, before I say anything further, um, I'll just acknowledge the fact that uh, Beringer definitely stands on the shoulders of giants, so we owe a tremendous debt to Bob Moog and to Alan R. Perlman um, for their designs. Um, and I definitely don't have this stuff in to spite them or anything like that. But if I'm honest, I have always wanted a System 55 exactly this size sitting on my desktop. Uh, and I just never thought it'd be possible to have a 2600 and I've loved this the whole time. So I'm really happy with this setup. Moving on, uh, my favorite drum machine. One of my only drum machines really is the Dramatix, Dramatix TR-06 from Roland. And then we kind of move into Roland gear over here. This wonderful JX-08 is what I use for most of my pad sounds. I love this freaking thing. It sounds so good. Um, and huge number of voices. It's just, this, this is the direction I hope um, Roland continues to go with their boutiques. It's a really good design. Uh, and then the J, JU-06A, which has the Juno 106 and the Juno 60, a fantastic sounding synth uh, in its own right. And I love it for arpeggios, as you probably noticed on my videos. And then the SH-01A, a wonderful uh, recreation of the SH-101. And uh, it's just awesome, indispensable. Up here, I've got the TB-03. And uh, if it tells you anything, this is the second time I bought this. I bought one and sold it and bought it again. So it's great. I love it. Um, Behringer has the equivalent uh, products to these, but I like the form factor of this better. And I like the fact that we have built-in effects, uh, especially on the TB-03 and the TR-06. Those built-in effects are great. New addition to the family is the ER-1 Electribe. Um, you'll be seeing and hearing this more in future. I'm pretty excited to, to have found one. The uh, MIDI brain and clock for my whole system uh, comes from the Electron Digitone. And uh, I've got it set up so that I'm running this uh, controller keyboard, it's a uh, Novation Launch Key. I run that into the um, Digitone and then through a splitter. It's like a quadra through. And that goes out to all the rest of the gear, um, with the exception being the uh, Archeria keyboard. So uh, I'm getting clocks throughout the system from there. And I run, you can see I've got my little stickers. Um, I can switch which which of the four Digitone uh, synths I'm playing and then switch throughout the rest of the system, uh, particularly to control these roll-ins. Then I have the wonderful uh, SP404 Mark II. I absolutely love this device. I loved the, the previous one, uh, but the limitations that it had really kept me from from keeping it and from being able to do what I wanted to do. This solves every single problem that the other one had, and I could not be more pleased. For me, it's almost like a performance four track recorder. I just love it, wonderful stuff. And then my super old iPad that still has the uh, analog audio output on it, still going strong. And I run lots of synths on it. I run Cubasis on it. Um, and it's, I produce all my videos on it. I do all the special effects on it. Um, so, you know, it hasn't died yet. <laughs> and, and I hope it lasts a while because uh, it's going to take a couple of years worth of tax money, I think, to replace it. And then the last piece of audio gear is the Behringer Xenix mixer with the, um, the Clark Technic uh, effects unit in it. Um, it's done me proud. All this stuff is working well enough and uh, I'm pretty happy to have it. Oh, I should say, let's see if I can get untangled on here, sorry. Dragging cables around, I still have the uh, Korg SQ-1 up on the shelf, so that's uh, never gonna leave the studio. I love it. And uh, great for portable solutions as well. And last but not least, 
the monodux himself. Hope this has been fun for you, and I uh, hope you all have a safe and happy Halloween and fall season. Take care.